came to Varanasi, India to do a show about Hinduism, about karma, reincarnation, the caste system, and a little known Hindu sect called the Aghori. What's happening now? I don't know. That's when things got out of hand. I'm pretty sure that that's not the Aghori that I was looking for. Reza Aslan is an author and scholar. Reza Aslan is a scholar of religions. Best-selling author Reza Aslan. As a scholar, as a Muslim, as an American. What is your reaction? I've been studying the world's religions for 20 years. And now, I'm going to live them. Religions are embedded in culture. In fact, they're inextricable from it. In many ways, religion and culture are one and the same, which is why religions have such influence over societies, for good and for bad. Think of women's rights in Islam or capitalism in Christianity. In Hinduism, there is a religiously defined social construct that essentially categorizes everyone in Indian society. This is called the caste system. But there is a sect of Hinduism called the Aghori, which, while technically 500 years old, is now trying to upend the caste system embedded in Hindu spirituality. In doing so, they are challenging the very fabric of Indian society. Hindus believe in reincarnation, the idea that after death we are reborn again and again. Each rebirth is determined by the karma that you accumulate from your previous life. Karma can be based on things like your words, thoughts, or deeds, but it can also be affected by Hindu notions of purity and pollution. If I achieve enough good karma, then my next birth will be higher than this one until finally I achieve liberation, moksha, from the cycle of birth and rebirth. But karma can work the other way too. And if I start accumulating bad karma, then I will have to pay the consequences of that in the next life. There's no such thing as hell in Hinduism, but there is something that's almost as bad. I could be reborn as an untouchable. The untouchables, also known as the Dalit, occupy the lowest level in India's caste system. The Brahmin are at the very top, the untouchables at the very bottom. The untouchables take care of society's most polluting tasks, cleaning the sewers, collecting the garbage, and in this city of Varanasi, disposing of the dead. The Ganges is not just a river. It's a goddess, Ganga, the mother of India. She's the embodiment of all sacred waters. Ganga's descent from heaven has made her a a vehicle for the ascent of the soul back up to heaven. The dead are burned all along her shores in the ghats, the cremation grounds. The ashes are then dumped into the water, allowing the soul to achieve instant liberation. It's kind of a shortcut, a way out of the endless cycle of death and rebirth. This belief has transformed the holy city of Varanasi, one of the oldest cities in the world, into a vast crematorium. There are 87 of these ghats all along the banks of the Ganges. 
Their fires burn continually. Every gat cremates around 100 bodies a day. The bodies are cremated by an untouchable cast called the domes. So you were born here, right? Oh, yes. I was born, brought up here in Varanasi. Yes. I've actually grown up swimming across the river and coming back every day during my summer vacations. <laughs> is that right? This is how I've grown up. I understand that a lot of people come here at the end of their lives hoping to die in Varanasi. It's sort of like a city of, of the dead in that That's sense. That's so correct. And there is a family of the domes who take care of an eternal fire which is burning there for ages. Nobody knows since how long it's burning. And these family of the domes, they are the owners of this fire. And everybody has to come to the cremation ground to get the diseased family members cremated. So they are indispensable part of the society, but they are considered to be untouchables. Mm. They are considered to be an outcast. No one becomes an untouchable or Dalit by accident. Being born a dome is a result of bad karma, acquired through the pollution that you accumulated in your previous life. But because there's nothing more polluting in Hinduism than a corpse, the dome continue to accumulate pollution, and therefore bad karma, lifetime after lifetime. It's a vicious, never-ending cycle. How long have you been working on the ghats? Mm. I understand that your wife passed away not too long ago. Did you yourself take care of the body? Hinduism is a beautiful religion. I've always been fascinated by it. I just can't wrap my head around this notion that there are people who, simply because of their birth or because they did things in a previous life, are then condemned to live life as an untouchable. I just, I. I can't wrap my head around it. In India, it's good to be a Brahmin. They are at the top of the caste system, the closest to liberation, living what could be their final life on Earth. What role does karma play in this attempt at liberation? In the previous birth, 
whatever you have done, it has imprinted in your mind. Uh, you're unconscious. And so karma accumulates and helps you on the path up in life after life, birth after birth, course, until you finally achieve liberation. Of course, of course. So if you are born in a lower caste, how do you achieve karma? How do you achieve liberation? Look, the persons who are living on this earth, they are not equal. They are not equal. Although the Indian constitution has outlawed caste discrimination, in practice, life for most Dalits in India can be bleak and unjust. Dalits are often barred from entering Hindu temples, from selling produce in local markets, from touching food or water at common gatherings, from entering non-Dalit homes. 54% of Dalit women have been physically assaulted. 23% have been raped. Only 1% of these cases has ended in conviction. In the last few decades, as the Indian economy has boomed, life has improved for many of India's untouchables, particularly in large urban centers like Delhi and Mumbai. But in a religious city like Varanasi, caste discrimination is still very much alive. Professor Amitabh Bhattacharya teaches journalism at Banaras Hindu University in Varanasi. So much of the Hindu experience is about the caste system. Can you talk about what that means? Casteism is always a tool for the people of vested interest. The rich people, they will always use all the means to divide the people to rule. So now I can only say, that we shall overcome someday. <laughs> we'll get out of this menace of casteism. Right. In Varanasi, there is a philosophy, a school known as Aghor. The followers of that philosophy are known as Aghoris. Aghoris believe whether it is a piece of cake or it's bullshit. Ultimately, it is the part of that original creation. So Aghoris will accept both the things equally, a chicken or a human flesh. It is all at par. So in a way, they're rejecting the very concept of caste. We are the least to decide because they believe that God has created, Lord God made them all. I've heard of a gori before. They reject the notion of purity and pollution. And so they have these things that they do, these kinds of outrageous actions to prove that nothing can pollute you. So they'll drink the water straight from the Ganges. They actually eat corpses, human flesh. They have been known to sleep on corpses, meditate on corpses. They do everything that would make your standard everyday Hindu freak out, uh, all to sort of prove that nothing outside of you can make you impure, nothing can pollute you, that you know, you're, that God is within you, and so God can't be polluted, so then neither can you. They're not all that popular, I have to say, because of some of these actions. We're at Lali Baba's ashram. Lali Baba is the most famous Aghori sadhu in Varanasi. Everybody knows about him. Welcome. Thank you. Come. This is the temple. While most Aghori ascetics are feral nomads, Lali Baba hosts guests. Age has mellowed him out somewhat. He no longer takes part in the ostentatious displays of cremation ground theatrics. These days, he spends his time meditating and doing yoga, subsisting on a diet of nothing but honey, which he drinks out of a human skull. 
there is my special room. Yeah, I am doing here Agora work. Come here. Lali Baba invited me into his inner sanctum, which is part temple, part Hindu rave, complete with its own laser light show. Can you tell me where did you get the skulls? From Ganga. The skulls come out of the water? Yeah, this is a holy person's skull. And this is the very dangerous skill. His mother name is Mother. Mother. mother <laughs> that's Mother. Yeah, 38 robbery, 8 murder, 8 rape. In the Agarha way, most important is eating the food in the skill. Why eat from the skull? There is lots of karma with the skill, powerful. You see, I'm 60 years old. You see, just like body is like 30 years. Mm. This is the power of Agora. You can fight me? No, I don't. I do not want to fight you. No. You can try. I. That's been. okay. I, I've heard that um, some Agori eat uh, rotted meat, rotted food, um, even human flesh. One person told me, after burning, human freeze, body freeze. Mm -hmm. It's so tasty. Oh, so sweet and so tasty. So you're not worried that you can be defiled or that polluted or that you'll be impure if you if you touch the dead? When body is burning, if anybody get this, access in his body, power is coming from there. What kind of power? This is secret these things. Only disciples who are special can do it. If you want to learn or know more, you go to Ganga get the, some water from Ganga, if possible, bath, and three drops of Ganga water put in your, you drink. He wants me to bathe in the water, and then he wants me to drink it. And you may not know this about me, but I have, I'm like a germaphobe. I, this is, like, I don't want to be an American asshole or anything, but there is no way I am getting in this water. I mean, this is one of the most polluted bodies of water in the world. I mean, forget about like the ashes that are dumped in here. I actually have already seen three different cow carcasses. One I think was a cow carcass. It had a backbone. I couldn't even figure it out floating in this water. There are millions of liters of human waste, sewage, untreated sewage that gets dumped into this water at Varanasi every day. I'm not kidding. The, yesterday, I saw a guy take off his pants and literally just take a shit directly into the water, right into the water. It's basically just a giant toilet. No. I am not getting in this water, and I am definitely not drinking it. On the other side of the river Ganges are groups of Agori nomads. Hopefully one of them will take me on. Namaskar. Namaste. Namaste. Madev. Can I join the fire? Please sit down. I, I came to learn about what it means to be a Gauri. He says, go and take a bath in the Ganges, then he will give you the sacred verse to how to be an Aghori. In the Ganges? Ah. Okay. 
I knew he was going to say that. <sighs> yeah, f it. Let's just do this. All right. Here. A gore literally means without fear. Without fear of pollution, without fear of taboo. And so it's time for me to put aside any fear I may have of germs and disease, and to simply accept this experience for what it is. It was peaceful in there, especially seeing the burning gats and those ashes being dumped in here and mingling with my body. It was kind of a profound thought. Also a little bit gross. He asks you, do you believe the god of the cremation, that's Lord Shiva. Do you believe in him? Yes. yes. Why the color black? He says, we are a ghoris in our sect. We use only the color black. He says, we are a ghoris in our sect. We use only the color black. Please sit down here. He wants you to sit here. He wants you to sit close to him so that he can protect you. He's asking, will you be his disciple? Um, yes. That's from the cremation, ashes of the dead. What was that? What was that? Some kind of a lubricant from inside the skull. Like a brain? Exactly. That's one of their ways to practice Agor Kriya. I, I came here to um, ask you some questions. Um, n um, maybe later. Maybe a maybe little bit later. later. Yeah. 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 He says, the god from ah. Karmashan, Lord Shiva, he gives them something to eat in form of rotten bones or some kind of human flesh. Jojo oh, thanks. Okay. Alright. Okay. Maybe I, I'll take this off right now and then. Okay. Just thank you. Alright. Okay. 
Thank you. Why are people on that side of the river so afraid of the Agori? I see. Um, why, why do you... Like this may have been a mistake. Maybe we just like somebody distracts him and then I just leave. Let's see where it goes. I can be polite. I can be very polite about it. I think you should say. Now he says that skull that's empty, that's hungry. He wants you to feed that. He wants you to make some donation to that. What would you like me to? He says he wants that skull to be filled with alcohol. Okay, actually, I think it's in the boat. So I'll. Would let hey, daru hai likha. No, 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 incorrect. He says he wants you to sit down. He wants me to go and bring it for him. Alcohol. एक मंगा बांजा बग्गा तो हाई गुरु उस ताज की समय नहीं करना साहब जल्दी है मशान बाबा बकीला बनती है मैं ऐसी बकीला बनोगी खाली बकीला बचने जाए खाली ये माता सब की मुरादें पूरी कर ये माता मशान महाराज काली माँ अली नहीं पीते तो मुंह में तो लगा के देख लो बस आह Will he tell me now what what I have to do? Hey Baba उठोगे उठोगे क्या नहीं उठेगे बेटा बाबा सब एक मिनट रुको so now he's He's not polite with me, and he knows. Oh my goodness! Bah! Oh my goodness! I got out of hand real fast, and uh, pretty sure that that's not the agori that I was looking for. Definitely feel like I've taken the wrong turn in this episode. Culminating in last night and running for my life from some crazy drunken baba. I'm not the only one turned off by these gory theatrics. It's no wonder that they're feared and mocked throughout India. And that's a tragedy. Because the gory message that God does not care about pure and impure, clean and unclean, Brahmin or Dalit, is an important one. There are modern sects of Aghori who, seeing that these age-old theatrics aren't getting their message across, are now working to change their methods and their image. It began with an Aghori guru by the name of Bhagwan Ramji, known to his disciples as Babaji. Babaji brought Aghorism into the mainstream, where its anti-caste values have caught on with India's rising middle class. Although he died in 1992, his disciples have been carrying on his work, opening clinics and centers and schools all across India that disrupt the caste system. They've even started an orphanage, the Bal Ashram Orphanage, which is run by Girish Sharma. Namaskar. Girish grew up a wealthy Brahmin, but he abandoned his privileged caste when he became an Aghori. 
before baba harihar ram ji aghori is used to live in crimson ground and they have a big beard and yeah. skull and drinking ganja and all these like scary They're frightening yeah frightening so he make few rules for them that now no beard no hair white dress nothing uh, scary and uh, so people can reach you they can come to you and then you can help them i've spent some time learning about the agor from some of the sadhus trying to express as much as i can my belief that there is no such thing as purity and pollution i i truly do believe that but i feel like so much of what i've been told and so much of what i've tried to do to express that it seemed meaningless it seemed that i was just trying to prove something mm. self satisfaction it was self satisfaction you, you have an idea in your mind and you from your action you are trying to prove that idea that this idea is correct which is not correct so how do i then express my agori belief just be a good human being everything will be straight hmm. everything your thought will be straight your action will be straight you will think about yourself your family your friends your society your world you will start start to respect the things which you have and is that the path to liberation would you say there is no other way there is no other way this is the only way for a lot of these children because many of them are from from lower caste they really wouldn't have any other possibility of getting this kind of education aghor never differentiate with the caste for us they are just a human doesn't matter from which caste they came i accept them i welcome them and uh, we try to give him equal facilities and equal love and uh, equal opportunity to learn god just created the, the humans the lives he doesn't created that casteism this is created by the human so uh, we don't believe on this <laughs> How many? Two. It's funny. There's a painting in the dining hall of Shiva and his wife Parvati and their son Ganesha. When I First walked in here I thought wow this like familial scene with kind of a ironic painting to have in an orphanage but then I realized Shiva is their father Parvati is their mother Ganesha is their brother I feel like I've learned something completely new not just about what it means to put your faith into practice but I feel like I've in a way found the hinduism that I was looking for the beauty of the religion minus this obstacle that I can't get past it's a completely new lesson I feel like I may have found the guru I've been looking for. Someone who offers a practical path for putting the gory principles into practice. Baba Bhagwan Ramji's modern interpretation of agorism in which there's no division between the rich and the poor, between high caste and low caste, in which traditional Hindu taboos are meaningless is precisely what I came to India to find. The Sri Agoreshwar Gurukul Literacy Center is another of Baba Ji's schools. It breaks all the rules. Okay? Mother means Ma. Ma. Boys and girls and children from different castes learn side by side. 
They are all taught to read, write, and speak English. Shushmita Singh is one of the teachers at this school. Nasta? Right. There's a lot of discrimination at um, traditional Indian schools yeah. against yeah. Um, untouchables. In India, they don't allow the children to work with them, to play with them. Not here. You can say in the school, we allow the children to play along with everybody. So this kind of discrimination makes it very difficult for lower caste kids to get any kind of education normally. Yeah, right. Every year, 300 children, they'll spread the message what our guru wanted to do. So here, not only do they get an education, but they're taught a gori. About the humanity. And, and a gori principles. Yeah. And so when they graduate, they become sort of representatives yeah. right, of right. agorism. You're right. So everything is made possible here. There's no word impossible in the dictionary of our ashram. And it doesn't matter what caste you no, are. No, it doesn't what matter. Religion, caste, you religion, are, nothing. Race. They're all same. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye, guys. See you guys. Bye, bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> Attached to this Agori school is a leprosy clinic, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. Leprosy is not just one of the oldest diseases in the world, but it's probably the most stigmatized. And almost every culture sees leprosy as a sign of a curse or a sin. Here in India, among many Hindus, leprosy is seen as a sign of bad karma. If you have leprosy, you probably did something in a previous life to deserve it. They are, in essence, the most untouchable of the untouchables. And so, millions of lepers here in India are left untreated. Many of them die. The patients here are not just treated, but they're loved, they're given compassion. Dr. Prabhau Pratap Singh is a second generation Aghori and a doctor at this clinic. Before Baba, the leprosy patients, they were kind of untouchables. Yeah. Untouchables. They were a condemned lot. People think it is not curable, so they would be abandoned by their family members. And they would ultimately die. So when Baba came, by treating those patients, giving them their self-respect, that they are human beings, and he said that uh, leprosy is not untouchable, by just touching a leper patient, you can't uh, contaminate infection. He uh, gave this consent and then started treating. Well, it's not just the fear of infection, it's just the fear of pollution as well. They were seen as, as unclean, impure. And, but of course, the foundation of Agore philosophy is there's no, no such thing as no, unclean, no, no such thing as no, impure. No. That Agore system, there is nothing called untouchable. You feel like Agore philosophy can actually change Indian society? Yes, I sincerely believe. Because here, everybody is equal. We are trying to convert this society into a caste-free society. It's funny, everybody talks about putting their faith into practice, that religion is supposed to be not just the things that you believe, but the things that you do. You want to know what putting your faith into practice looks like? This is what it looks like. What does it mean to live without fear? It means recognizing that purity and pollution are just an illusion. It means knowing that nothing you do, nothing you eat, nothing you touch can cut you off from God. That if God lives inside you, as the Agori believe, then nothing can defile you. The family you were born into, the color of your skin, the clothes that you wear, your education, your wealth, none of these matter. What matters is what you do. 
how you love, how you care for the least among you. So I will eat the ashes of the dead. I will drink the water from the Ganges. I will worship the God within me. I came to India to discover what it means to be a Gauri. What I discovered is what it means to be human. I believe there's no discrimination in the society among the gender and the religion and caste and creed. I believe in duty first to my responsibility and to my karma. I believe we are all part of one energy, one God. I believe in river Ganges more than a religion, more than a river. It is a way of a life for me. Jai Ganga Maya. I believe in Hindu philosophy. It gives me inner strength. I believe in my Guru's philosophy of service to humanity and mankind. I believe the external bodies are different, but within the soul is one. I believe Shiva is the universal God. Oh, Shiva is my heart always.